All right. We um, pleased with the energy and the attitude of the kids. Certainly a lot of effort and uh, physicality at practice. Uh, like most game plans, we've got some details to clean up. Um, but our kids are in the right place, I think. You know, it's, it's tomorrow's November the 1st, and it's that time of the year. So the teams that are in contention have got a lot on the line, and certainly it's good for our program to be in contention. Uh, I've told the players today, you've been told your whole life that knowledge is power. Well, that's a lie. Uh, it's actually incomplete. Knowledge by itself is use useless. Power is in the application, and I think these, all these guys know what they need to do to get prepared to play. Um, it's a matter of applying that. You know, we got to have self-discipline this time of year to try to separate yourself, how much sleep we get, how much we hydrate, what we eat. I mean, it all matters, how much film study we do. So self-discipline will be important, uh, and I think we're getting better in that area. But we're excited about this opportunity to go play Troy, who won the league last year undefeated in our league and uh, beat a power five team so they got a really good football team so we're going to see what we got this saturday what questions we got how much of a, a difference maker if at all will it be if uh, marcus jones their kickoff return guy in the corner really doesn't play well he's a significant player i mean he impacts almost every game he plays in as a returner and he's also one of their better cover guys um, so it, it will be significant if he doesn't play uh, similar to if, uh, let's say, Raheem Malone or uh, Raymond Calais or Jamarcus Bradley, one of our critical players that is a returner and also a significant player. So no question, he's a good player. Got a lot of respect for him as a player. He does, he does things the right way. Um, and you can see that he affects their team. How do you balance having them uh, ready and yet, like you said, it's November 1st, rested all with the same Yeah, it's a, it's a delicate balance. We um, we kind of change modes. You know, this week we're into the kind of – I break it up into four games at a time. So we're in 9, 10, 11, 12. So we adapt our reps. Uh, really, Sunday is where we made the major change. We only walked through. We did not practice, um, you know, similar to what we did in the open date. But um, – that's the one change we made. And, um, you know, I think it's that time of the year. I, I do think that you can't ignore that, you know, the work you have to do on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday is imperative, you know, regardless of where you're at. Um, Maybe so, a little bit better, uh, more recovery time between the game and practice on Tuesday. Right. I mean, you know, you got, I think your, mainly your issues are contact related, you know, that's where we're at. We don't have a lot of soft, to is soft tissue issues, uh, but I think Sunday will help us in that regard. Speaking of those, though, what about, I didn't ask you the other day about Brooks. Brooks has uh, participated in practice in a modified fashion. Um, you know, we do have some updates relative to injuries. McCaskill is back into doubtful mode. Uh, again, kind of re-injured his uh, ankle in the game. You know, we've been trying to get him going, but he's been limited. It hasn't been able to take as many reps as we'd like. You know, if they don't practice, we, we don't play them. So, um, you know, so McCaskill would be the one guy who's kind of back. He's similar to the way he was maybe two weeks ago. Um, not quite ready to play at this point. So, we'll see how he did on the film today, but he didn't do much yesterday. He was a three for three. Mm -hmm. How many has he played? Uh, I think he's actually been in four. So, he's still in that. Gray area, right? But at his position, you know, we, we probably need him. It just, I mean, but hey, we'll see where he's at. You know, it just depends as we go forward here. Any update on Chase Rogers? Chase has participated in practice this week in a modified format, just uh, walk through, flex, individual, uh, not any team reps, no contact yet. Really, um, a guy who we're going to probably do that with for two weeks. You know, try to try to get him back in football shape, football condition. Uh, he did feel good today after a pretty good little workload yesterday, but he's doing some things early in practice, and then uh, Coach Hockey takes him and he does some conditioning specific stuff, does some underwater treadmill during practice, and then we get him back out there. How so, go ahead. How do you manage uh, an injury like Chase's, where a guy who might have been the starter for week one but hasn't played all year? How do you manage? A mess up but do you change the lineup to accommodate or, or is this kind of a roll with the hockey? Yeah he won't play until he's 
practice for a good length of time. You know, we're not just going to put him out there. I mean, you got to get ready to play. He's got to go through his own version of training camp to some degree, even if he just plays in two games or whatever. I mean, we're not going to play him until he has confidence, number one, and then medically we feel like he's ready and physically we feel like he's ready. He's got – I mean, the amount of reps that he's missed is, um, you know, you, you can't put a value on what those other guys have been through, you know. So – We'll only play him when he earns that opportunity. And we're not going to risk him too important for the future relative to making sure he doesn't have a relapse of any kind. Is Gehrer, um, I got it right? Gehrer, there you go. <laughs> it took me a while too, so. Um, is he just going to be a week-to-week guy or did you find out if there's anything wrong? No, I would say he's probably out this week. Um, you know, he hasn't done anything yesterday or today. He's been mo- mostly rehab type stuff, so it's a knee, uh, but nothing long term, no. It's just a matter of getting the swelling out, uh, nothing significant, nothing surgical. Beyond, something beyond this week, um, what, what, at this point, what do you think you can do to address the, or fix the attendance problem? Um, I think, you know, I tell, you know, my attitude toward it is at this point in time, it's hard for us to do anything to control it or affect it. Rel- you know, that we're doing everything we can to prepare the team at this point. You know, what I say about it is, hey, let's, let's go perform so well and be, get in contention and be so good they can't ignore us, you know, and they want to be associated. And, you know, that's going to be my attitude is, hey, we're going to continue to get the team to play better. And I think at some point or another, you either want to be associated with us or you don't. You know, um, but I do think that we have a group of fans that are passionate. I think it's a unique time. You know, let's be honest here. The pride associated with uh, our football program went away for a while, you know, truth be known. So uh, all we can do is continue to perform well, uh, continue to great de- uh, make great decisions, uh, do things with class, character, integrity, uh, play with great effort. Uh, in toughness and, and be a team that the community can be proud of. And certainly at some point or another, if we continue to win and we're in contention and we can do something that uh, they'll be proud of, they'll show up and support you, you know, and that's going to be my attitude. Do you think there's um, – or what do you think is the biggest factor beyond the whatever you did or didn't do on the field early in the season? I think that's probably – I apologize, especially relevant to – Fulman students, too. Yeah, I think it's twofold. I think it's a national problem. Not only is it an issue at University of Louisiana, uh, in Acadiana, I mean, it's a problem at the University of Alabama. You know, I mean, as good of a program as they've had, their attendance is doing this as well, you know. So I think it's a national problem. You know, it's so, there's so much available when you can sit out home and take in 12 games instead of one. I think it's more about, improving our product and our experience for the fan, improving our venue, uh, improving the product on the field is what I'm in control of. So we'll continue to do that. But I don't, I'm not going to sit around and complain when we laid an egg and got beat by Coastal Carolina at home. We played on national TV twice and put an embarrassing product out there against Mississippi State and Alabama. You know, I mean, that's what I can control. Now, if we go in there and hold our own against Mississippi State or halfway played decent in Alabama, beat Coastal Carolina, I promise you they'll be out there showing up. So, you know, we're a middle-of-the-road pack team right now, you know, and we're in, we're in the process of uh, putting this thing back together. Uh, and at some point, uh, I promise you, there'll be something out there that people want to be associated with and be proud of. But we're just going to continue to build and invest in the players as people, as students, and uh, the football will take care of itself. And I firmly believe, you know, we'll be back and we'll get the numbers that we used to get around here. Uh, and that was directly associated with what? Winning. Okay, so uh, that's what we can control and that's what we're going to do. You guys have shown improvement over the last three, four, or five weeks. How close do you feel like the team is getting to where you expect? Nowhere close. Yeah, I mean, 
we haven't dominated an opponent yet. Maybe New Mexico State, but really we didn't dominate them. You know, we let them hang around in the second half. We've had opportunities to uh, finish, but we haven't. So, you know, we, we want to show up to the park and, you know, dominate the game every week, especially in group of five football in our conference. Um, we're not doing that right now, but we are doing a lot of things better. We're doing a lot of things well. Uh, we just got some deficiency. We have an incomplete roster. Um, you know, we've got areas of our team where we can coach better, we can train better. We got all kinds of things that we can do better. So that's what our focus is on, continue to make improvement. And um, I like the attitude of our players. That's the number one thing I would tell you. They're, they're bought in and we got a group that's starting to believe a little bit. And uh, I think that's what's important. Is there anything specific you can do this week to avoid an emotional letdown after such an exciting and, and high win on Saturday? I think it's the same things you do after you get beat, you know, or you maybe you perform poorly. You know, you got to harp on uh, dotting the I's and crossing the T's in your preparation, you know, checking each box in terms of what you can control, um, whether that's how much you sleep, what you eat, hydration, film study routine, how engaged you are in the meetings, walkthroughs, and practice, um, what type of leadership that we're getting from our staff and players, what words we speak. I mean, it it's, it's, uh, goes back to what we said at the very beginning. It's about application, self-discipline. And I think uh, when you do that, you typically perform very well. What do you think is truly behind Dave's fascination with tight ends? Uh, you got me. I mean. <laughs> I'm a tight end guy, man. That's where I got my first full-time job. I coached tight ends for three years. A couple guys played uh, good ball. Michael Palmer played about six years in the league, and Dwayne Allen's playing for the Patriots. So I think he was really wanted to be a tight end maybe at some point in his career. My first you know? jersey was Russ Francis. There you go. <laughs> Goes back to the beginning. Um, going back to what you were talking to Tim about, what, what, is, what do you see as your three or four – you know, priorities as the head of uh, the football program. And I guess I would, you know, open it up and say, you know, in respect to DJ Durkin's situation, well, what do you see here without commenting on, on his deal? Oh, yeah, I got you. I mean, that's the dynamic that I think is awesome about college football and I love is um, requires a ton of people. You know, I mean, you're, you're in a leadership position. You've basically got extensions of the organization and, developing some continuity in terms of what your culture should look like, you know, what you believe in, um, how you want your players to conduct themselves, what type of interaction you want with all those areas of organization in terms of the professionalism. Um, but, you know, I think it's, it's my job, you know, to certainly address, confront, uh, make right anything that I see out of place. And, and we've got a good staff. Uh, and I think when you get put in these positions, you start to realize the value of putting people that are like-minded around you. And um, I think we put together a really good staff, and I think that's one of the reasons that we're gaining a little bit of traction.